check this out. Um, I don't know how many of you have heard of Brian Black. It's fairly new. It's some pretty cool stuff. So when Davey gets on, we'll start the chat with him. You can ask questions. It's a little difficult sometimes for me to read the questions as they're going by. Um, but I will do my best to get some in. But it'll be fascinating to hear. I mean, if you don't know, David's been with several companies. We'll find out what it was like to work with all these different companies in the shoe industry. And I gotta say, like, I feel like I got a kindred spirit in my love of hype beast style and just sneakerhead uh, type of shoes and, and aesthetic and street culture. So uh, as we talked about a little bit when we had on our other uh, guests, you know, skateboarding is where I started. So, you know, I started out on that side. I think David started off in basketball and has helped some of the brands that you've heard of in the running industry and in in basketball. So we'll check it out soon when David joins us from Brand Black. So hopefully it should be any minute now. Uh, I will tell you, David, I will just hit the circle, circle of request or I can see if I can find you here. Um, all right, let's look for David here. Yeah, David, either hit the circle, circle faces. There, I got you actually, here we go. You're gonna see a request to join and then you'll be on. Do we there do it? he is. There we are. All right, what's up, you'll, David? You'll forgive Gramps on not knowing how to, how to do this. No, man, that's all right. This is awesome. Yeah. So I want to give people a little bit of background on you first because sure. you've pretty much, I mean, most brands that we love, you've touched somehow. And uh, I think you start off in basketball, but I'll let you tell the story. So, well, let me flip this around and see if that works. All right, here we go. So I started uh, when I was a college student at, uh, I'm from New York. I played, um, played basketball in high school and uh, college. And my parents were both in the fashion industry. So my mom had been a model. My father was one of the founders of Kenzo. So I had this weird combination of sport and fashion from the very beginning. Um, and basketball was a passion of mine. I was in school for car design actually, and wanted to get a summer gig. And uh, a friend of my family said, you know, uh, the design director from, from Fila went to Pratt also for car design. So you should reach out to them. So that's how I got in there. Started off as a summer job. And by the time I was a junior, I had designed uh, this guy, Mr. Grant Hill. Uh, Mr. Grant Hill. That. Hey, yeah. were you in Maryland when you did that? No. So back then it was actually in New York. Ah, cool. Back then it was in on Park Avenue and uh, it was on Park and 33rd Street. So right by the uh, Empire State Building. So that awesome. shoe was my first sort of performance shoe. Uh, although I, I think when I look back at it now, it's a hunk of shit in terms of functional. Uh, there's a lot of aesthetics, but from a functional standpoint, let's just say that when I was playing, I wasn't playing in that shoe. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was your shoe of choice at that time? I, I think I played primarily in uh, Alpha Force. I had okay. Alpha Force. I liked a, a low mid. Um, I think, you know, later on, the shoe that I liked the most was the Kobe. I think, uh, I think of all the designers at Nike, I think, uh, what's his face? Uh, Eric Abar probably made the best performance basketball shoes by, 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 by a country mile. I think Tinker is obviously the god of aesthetics. <laughs> yeah. But the shoes are generally speaking not tremendous, you know, from all, you know, you name one. And I loved, I had every single one. I wish I wouldn't have played in them because I killed all of them or I kept them, you yeah, know. Yeah. But from the threes to the 11s, like the 11s, you know, the clear butter really sucks. It gets dirty unless you're playing on an NBA court where you have, you know, slaves mopping it up every two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they go down the line. They're, they're not great. They look great, but they're not great to play in. So from a functional standpoint, and that's an important thing because I learned a lot about that later on uh at at adidas which was my next gig so after i left uh fila in 97 
went out to Portland, uh, started working with Adidas. I wanted to go to Adidas because they had Kobe and I thought he was going to be the next Grand Hill. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so that kind of got me out there. And uh, it didn't really, it didn't pan out. Uh, it was a frustrating time there. I think I learned a lot in terms of how, how to make shoes and the industry, but um, the culture there was not conducive to what I was trying to do. And I think to where the industry ended up going, it was very old school. It was very, um, they saw function as almost independent from style. And that's not the case. You know, if you look at how Italians um, view function and, des and, and fat and, and design, it, they can be sort of uh, harmonious. You look at some of the new Nikes, I mean, the, you know, the new Vapor Maxes and all that, and they're fucking crazy looking and they're cool as hell. And they, and they obviously they work because people are taping up their shoes and pretending like they're not Nike. So <laughs> <laughs> we know they work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, I would say, yeah, the Vaporfly is a, it's one of those things that it, there's a couple shoes that have changed my mind about how they look by how they perform. So they yes. may have looked weird in the beginning and then you run in them and you, it's beautiful. That's and then my the shoe becomes beautiful. As a designer, to me, that's the holy grail. There's nothing more interesting and cool than, than, than something that is so radically different that it's kind of shocking and it makes you incredulous at first. And then it creates a sort of paradigm shift in that industry, you know, whether it's um, maximal shoes, right? I mean, I, I'd say that the Vaporfly actually followed the trend of Hoka, I guess, on some levels by sort yeah. of, you know, and, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to, uh, can't really go into detail about that, but I've talked to Jean-Luc Dayard a lot. And, uh, you know, he mentioned something that was so true. He just said, you know, any athlete, if he's given more cushioning and less weight, We'll always give you a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. And I right. mean, it, not to go too far down the rabbit hole, but when we went out to Nike, they were talking about the React Infinity, and they were basically saying that when they tested the shoes with runners, the cushion was the part that made runners like the shoe. Yeah. And so you're, you're dead on with that. Like, if you give cushioning that doesn't weigh too much, you got gold. Yeah, it's free then. It's like you gave me something for free. And, and, and you know, when you look at, <clears throat> actually, I, I talked, this is further down the road, but there was a, a time now, I'm going off script here, when I was talking to Meb about why he was so successful. And he said, I was never the fastest guy. I was always prepared. He's like, but the big difference between me and the other runners is I have the highest threshold of pain. He said, I am able to puke my guts out and keep going. I can do things where other guys just say enough, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so what got me thinking about that is that ultimately, you know, you know, I think there was a Nike campaign about that. Like running sucks, right? On some levels, it's the best thing in the world, but it also sucks because it's fucking torture. So the idea that, uh, or at least marathon running, right? The idea that you could make it a little more pleasant, it's, it's fantastic. And that's kind of the, the revolution of, of Hoka and, and these vapor flies is that they're, they're, I mean, they're shockingly thick if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right? Compared to what was a racing yeah. shoe a couple of years ago. Well, it was the opposite. I think this is one of yours. Yeah. That was the like OMFC. Yeah. Yeah. A few years back, this was it. Light. This, yeah. Light. You, I mean, it's I mean, basically this... a cross country. It's a cross country shoe with a little bit more. You know, that's it. Yeah. And there's a plate in there. Yeah. But the plate. <laughs> yeah. But that's. That's a traditional plate. Yeah, it's yeah. for structure and a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, it is amazing to see this is only a few years ago. Yeah. To where, to where we are now. And I, th I think, you know, we were actually talking about this the other day, and I don't know what your take would be on it. I think there's space for somewhat both shoes in, in distance running. Yeah, right. It comes down to personal sort of preference on some levels although i don't know and maybe you would know better than me i feel like at the elite 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 level it's gonna be pretty much one thing do you do, do you disagree yeah, yeah. you know I when mean, you get when know, you like, get to those the guys that get to start on their own <laughs> we, yeah exactly uh, but they, they they're gonna pick the best 
shoe for yeah. them. I do think that it's interesting, like a uh, Asics with the meta right, and we, we could go meta ra you know, red racer. We could go totally off off tangents here and uh, go into that. But one thing I did want to get into you before we go into like pure performance stuff, but like I think one of the things that I was attracted to about running was, as you can see, I love footwear and. Even when I was a skater as a young kid, like I wanted, there was a specific van I wanted with a you know specific pattern, and you know I've always been a bit of a a fan of footwear. I feel like if you put on a shoe, it can change the whole way you feel about yeah. yourself and your your clothing. It, it transforms you to another level. Another piece of clothing for me does that. Yeah, and, and I think we're probably of the same generation, right? Where our generation was where sneakers became transformative, where, you know, Jordan culture and all of that, where all of a sudden now a piece of footwear, like you said, Vans or whatever, they can, it's everything. It's the foundation of your whole outfit, right? It used to just be yeah. or white, right? Back when they called them tennis shoes, they were just white tennis shoes and they matched your outfit. But now, you know, all of a sudden you're wearing these obnoxious shoes that are just, they're, they're the focal point of everything and their status. Yeah. Timberland yeah. butters. I mean, it, I can map out my... <laughs> Beef and broccoli. To shoes. <laughs> yeah. But I, I see that with you, and maybe that's what it is. Maybe it is a generational thing. Because, like, growing up, I got one pair of shoes until they were worn out, and then you could get the next. So as, a, as an adult, when I started working, and I could afford to buy shoes and more shoes, and what I wanted to do, I did it. But what I love about what I'm seeing so far from Brand Black is these aren't just, like you said, function. These these like the specter that thing is hot i mean that looks awesome like i i i love wearing that regardless whether it was running or fashion or whatever and i see that going into your designs i've seen some of your other even your uh high tops your basketball shoes some of the other stuff going on like do you feel that sets you apart like it, it's obviously intentional what's yes. the mission in your head so let me go back to Speaking of Tinker Hatfield, uh, when I, so I grew up in Manhattan um, and the, the, the store next to me that had the coolest sneakers was Super Runner Shop on right by the, uh, you know, that, you remember that store on 89th and, uh, and I think it was Madison. It was right near the, the park entrance. I used to hang yeah. out 80th and Lexington. That's okay. My so I grew up on 90th place. in New York. So yeah. that was my spot. And um, I remember the first time I saw the Jordan th three was in there and they had it on the wall and I thought to myself my god I've never seen anything like this I don't know what this is it's 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 I think it was my first time sort of seeing design speaking to my generation speaking you know it was new it was kind of dangerous it was crazy it was it was young it was, it was expensive it was the first year I got over a hundred dollars yes yes exactly and so it got me thinking you know Oh my God, somebody made this. Like there's, there's people that are designing these things that are doing these things. And that's when I decided at that moment, I wanted to be a sneaker designer. That was, that was the absolute moment there. And what I liked about those shoes was, like I said, they're, they weren't the best performance, but they were good enough. But from a, a, a passion and design standpoint, there's so much love that goes into them. And I feel like our industry can become kind of clinical especially on the running side where the stakes are very high and the performance levels are high enough that it's run oftentimes by engineers, right? And I guess you see that also in the automotive industry, right? Like as you start getting into the performance specters, you start getting into race cars, performance cars, you know, you start fighting with the engineers a lot. And I think that tension is obviously the best space to be in because you end up with the best products. But generally speaking, somebody wins and you don't have a good synergy. And so you either get really good looking product that sucks a really functional product that's just boring as hell. And so, <laughs> right, you get either or usually. And, uh, and what I've tried to do was sort of live in that space where the two of them are balanced as best I can. Uh, and that came from working with uh, Kurt uh, when, I was, when we were launching the Skechers product, uh, who had been at Nike for 20 years. And he and I had a really fantastic relationship and I learned a lot from him. And I think that balance is where I'm always trying to be. So ultimately, as much as the shoe should function 
if you're not really drawn to it and you don't want to sit there and geek out on it for like a half hour at all the details, then what's the point for me? Yeah. And Kurt's, Kurt's still a friend of yours. Like you still contact and speak with Kurt often, right? Texted him, yeah, just two days ago, yeah. 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 Yeah, and I ask him questions all the time. You know, I'll ask him because he is, he's, he's, the, he's the godfather of this stuff, you know? So, so I'll, I'll, I'll run ideas by him or ask him questions about certain things or, you know, because now that Brand Black is, is, is really small, you know, there's just a few of us. So ordinarily at other companies, there'd be like 12 people doing, you know, the jobs that I'm doing right now. So for instance, <laughs> so here are, you know, this is a Spectre supercritical fit test samples, you know, fits a little shallow, ball girth's not very good. So we got some work to do there. So like, these are the kind of things that, you know, I'll ask his opinion on because I didn't have to do these things in the past. And now, now yeah, I have you to have do that. Yeah. So who, how are you relying? Because obviously, when it comes to performance product, you need to have athletes in the shoes mm -hmm. and giving you feedback. How, how are you doing that with a small team and, and who do you trust? So we still have a network of guys that we, you know, that I, I've known from throughout the years and they'll test the shoes and, and give us feedback. It's been tough though, because we're small and we don't have the amount of, of pairs that we used to have or the access to them and things are always at the last minute. So it's been tough. I will say that we can cut through a lot of the early stages of testing through just product knowledge, right? So yeah. it's like, you know, just don't, I'm not as risky as I, as I could be if I was at a big organization where I could try really wacky shit. So I have to be a little bit more careful, but it allows me to not waste time, which yeah. is good for us when we're small. Well, it's gotta be exciting because, you know, obviously when Sketchers kicked off the performance line, you were there with them. And I mean, you were pretty much started that with Kurt. Yeah, And, you know, there was a lot of pushback. There was a lot of people because of the brand and um, that created a lot of noise and distraction for, for, for building that. But you got to be pretty proud that, like, they stuck to the guns. And at this point, if you're truly into running and you're into performance, you respect what Skechers is doing. They have yeah. a great product. I would say, in my mind, they're, they're top, top five manufactured right now for performance running shoes yeah and i think and i gotta you, tell you that you look it's at all, kurt and i know this it's all kurt i mean i gotta give it to him yeah and he is an island <laughs> that, i mean it's nice that you say that but you know your blood and sweat went into it went into the start and you know i re, i remember uh working with you and and kurt way back then i, I did like a little piece for believe in the run so yeah, for, for early um, early on you were one of the few that you know uh gave us a shot because in the beginning there was so much you know, Skechers is what Skechers is, right? So we all, we all know what that brand is. Um, yeah. So we were trying to, we were trying to create something completely different. So it was a different culture, different product. There was, there was a group of us that had come from different places that had different core values. Uh, and Kurt and I were the nexus of that. So, uh, and when I say it's all Kurt, I mean like now. Yeah. So, um, uh, so when we launched that first Go Run, that was the sort of, you know, we saw it as a brand, we saw it as multiple products. Um, and it took a lot, as you can imagine, a lot of fighting, not because we had to really shift the cultural mentalities of that brand, you know, that brand. Internally was, and externally. Oh my God. Externally, I'll, I'll tell you something. This one really stuck with me. So first outdoor retailer show, we just signed Meb. And we're showing the go run. And I think we had appointments set up for Runner's World and we're, we're, we're waiting. You know, they're, they're finishing with somebody else. And the guys before us were, were uh, under armor. And I remember them sort of snickering and sort of making fun of us as we were standing there <laughs> the whole time. And I was so salty. I was so mad. I was like, you, oh, my God, you guys don't even know. You know what I mean? Like, how dare you? But I guess, you know, in retrospect, I probably would have had done the same thing. Uh, but we got the last laugh, you know. I mean, I don't see them making very many running shoes right now. So I think it go, it, it's a real testament to anybody that wants to do something really hard that if you really stick to it and your heart's in the right place and you're building product that is, uh, has a, it, it fits a need and you're really passionate about it, that it, it can work no matter what, because good God, if Skechers can make performance running shoes, 
that that that's a that's a big that's a big task <laughs> yeah and, and you actually brought up like it's actually somewhat it's becoming my life's mantra it's like consistency just keep showing up keep doing yeah it doesn't always have to be perfect just keep showing up and if you do eventually i mean you, you hammer enough nails something's gonna stick <laughs> exactly but, um, or you're just around long enough that people are just like well i guess he's not going anywhere so <laughs> <laughs> exactly um i mean i was a fly on the wall for so many you know shoe companies like ah this guy but this um guy. <laughs> yeah and then at a certain point they're just like well i guess he's i guess he's I guess he's going to do this thing. All right, we'll yeah. see him some shoes now. <laughs> but let's talk about, so we talked about the past. Adidas, Fila, uh, working with Kurt, Brand Black. What's the plan? Like, where are we going? So Brand Black is, you know, what I've always wanted to do. The combination, like I said, of fashion and sport mixed together. Uh, my partner, Billy, and I um, share that aesthetic. Billy is, uh, you know, also same generation uh, you know, started in the streetwear uh, in Florida back in the days, really in the early, early days, Pervert and, uh, and all those brands. And then and then so he's got a great and he's a total brand nerd. He's yeah. the most pure, you know, brand athlete I've ever met. So I think the two of us sort of bounce bounce ideas off each other very well. And he's non-linear, non-specific about sort of he's not like a. You know, there's so many of the guys that I've worked with in the industry are just kind of like, you know, let's do what Nike did and, and, and you know, yeah. change whatever. And it's just like, that's not interesting at all. And it's kind of just copying. So I think it's nice to find somebody that's a kindred spirit in that regard. Um, with Brand Black, we started off, uh, obviously, with my core, core, core competency, which is bas basketball. Uh, so we made performance basketball shoes. And I think those really set the mark for what we were trying to do from, in terms of aesthetic and function. We had a real big following with the rare metals and those kinds of products. Um, running was always in the back of my head, but it, we just didn't have the resources to do it right. So we started from the fashion side of things. And as we started building momentum and, and, and getting some infrastructure in place, felt like we're finally in a position to launch performance running now that we can actually test the shoes, now that we can actually, you know, engineer them and then get them where they need to be. So our first products are the super critical running products, which, um, to me is the most exciting thing that's happened in foam in the last, you know, 10 years. Um, there's the lightweight foam, which you're seeing on the, the, the vapor flies and all that. Uh, I had that foam also for uh, some of the basketball prototypes that I made back in this. I think I have one. I don't know if I can find it. No, I don't know where it is. I have this Dyneema prototype that's pretty freaking crazy. Uh, uh, but th that foam is, is great, but it's, you know, it's, it's just light. And it has poor compression set over time. It's really for racers, you know, because it, you don't get a lot of mileage out of it and it, it does what it does. But the super critical foam is, is to me insane. You know, you're talking about a foam and that was introduced to, to me by a gentleman, um, Tony Dean, who had been at Nike as well for a long time. And then he was at Brooks Innovation Lab. And then he went to, I mean, this is the smartest person I've ever met. <laughs> he went, he, he was at, so he went to Chapel Hill. I think he went to Chapel Hill, right? And then he went to, so he says, so he's got a Southern drawl too, which makes it even more like remarkable because it's like, it's so, you know, incongruous with, with this brain. So he's got, He's a uh, uh, Nike in the kitchen. Then he went to Brooks, ran their innovation lab. Then he went to Apple and engineered the keyboards and the magnets for the iWatch. <laughs> and then we got him. Because <laughs> Kurt knew him. Yeah, Kurt knew him from back in the days. And he was the one that introduced us to the supercritical phone. Um, and, you know, it, it's it. got numbers that are just out. That means. Yeah. Like, can you explain yeah, so that? The supercritical phone. Yeah, and I think I have a swatch of it here. I brought some show and tell. This is the stuff. So super critical foam, I don't know if you can see it. It is, you know, in the white, you can see it a little bit better. I think you can sort of see here. This is what it looks like. Um, so it has a sort of, if you put it up against the light, it's translucent, which is really cool. So light can pass through it. Um, it is made by, so they take um, a traditional mold. It's like a compression mold. So they have a blocker and they put it in. But the way it was described to me was they are chilling the mold uh, with, uh, I think, liquid CO2 to keep it really, really cold. And that allows, as you know, as you pressurize things, heat goes up. So they can pressurize the living hell out of it. And it allows them to, when they open the thing up, the reaction is so violent that the, 
the foam molecules are, are completely different. And so what we're ending up with are resiliencies close to 75, you know, mm. whereas usually you're in the 40 range. So you're higher than boost and you're at half the weight. So, it's, so this would be comparative maybe if I was looking at like the, it, would it be like the nitrous infused or is it more like the Reebok foam that was in like the um, Go Run? Do you, do you, are you familiar with that one? No, no. Okay, uh, let me see. I got it here. I mean, now, I mean, Brooks is using the DNA flash, which is similar to what's in the, the Go Run. Uh, razor, yeah. So I don't know if it's similar to that. Those, yeah, those those are all supercritical foams. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Yep, so it's, yep. it's similar. So there's it, a couple people here, doing here it, it now. Oh, took me a second. This is the um, the Reebok version. That's it. And that's so it's got a really nice bounce to it. Really nice underfoot feel. Yeah. So that's exciting, and it's not that heavy. you like, and it's not that heavy. It's not super light. But I think the resiliency and the compression set, which is you know, higher than 60, so it's just nuts. I mean, so it lasts a long time. You get a lot out of your shoes. Uh, what I like about it is the proprioception as well. And it has a nice, like you said, it has a nice feel to it. You know, there's, there's intangibles sometimes with, with some of these materials. Yeah. Um, some of the foams, you know, they're light and they do their job, but they don't really give you much. I don't know. It has a soul, this foam. You know, not, not, to, yeah. not to sound cliche. Personality. But yeah, it has a personality and it's kind of, it feels nice on your feet. You feel like you're connected to the ground. I like it in basketball as well. I think proprioception is really one of the sort of unsung heroes of sport that isn't talked enough about, you know, ground field and, and that sensibility yeah. to, to sort of what where your foot's going to land. Yeah, just in the feeling you get. So I think that that's important, yeah. you know. I think that's one of the hardest things as a um, reviewing shoes and going through them is a lot of times I want to say a shoe is fun and it's hard to describe, you know, what, what that, that feeling is. is. It just, when you land and you roll off, you just get in that groove and yeah. it, and that it feels, shoe it just feels good. And, and, you, and you know it very quickly, right? Yeah. You kind of get out, get out the store, start running a little bit, and you're like, this feels pretty damn good. Now, obviously, you have to, you know, test it over some miles and see if it starts giving yeah. you blisters. I mean, usually if it doesn't break down and it sounds like the foam. Now, your foam isn't PIBA based or anything like that. What's the main... Uh, ingredient in that foam it is so interestingly supercritical foam is a process that can be applied to tpu so thermoplastic urethanes like boost or regular ethyl vinyl acetates like regular evas like regular foams so it depends so the okay. one that we're using is the eva based one which is lighter uh the tpu one has numbers off the charts but it's a little heavier and it's ungodly yeah. expensive uh and it, and it starts to get into you know some of the limitations that boost has, right? So boost, you know, usually you have to cage it for some sports because it sort of gets unstable or it's heavy enough that you have to sort of do certain things around it. So I like, I like that you get enough of the positives from the EVA with the supercritical foam, but you don't get any of the negatives that come with the TPU. And at the end of the day, I hate to say it, but most people are just cheap and they don't want to spend that much money, especially if you're <laughs> really running, especially if well, you're I mean, four or five hundred miles up there. You, you don't want to kill them that quick, you know? People look at the Ultra Boost, and the Ultra Boost does have a nice ride. Um, the weight is a killer, and then yeah. you have to put, like you said, that Continental Web rubber is there to hold it in place. Um, you know, and it doesn't die though, and that's right. why that shoe is expensive. You're using more expensive materials. You're having to use more expensive materials to hold yes. it together. Yes, and then it just makes a shoe heavier. But um, I think that the trade-off, especially when you go, when you think running shoes, people always ask, how long will your running shoe last? And this right. If it lasts. Hold on, let me turn that off. Yeah, you got it. This is what happens when you go live. People call you. Very important. Um, but what, I, what I'm saying is a lot of people want to know about durability and how long something lasts. And I'm like, do I really want my running shoe to last more than 300 miles? I mean, I guess if I'm on a super tight budget, I do. But right. for the most part, I want to. I want to try something else. I want to move on. And, and, and yeah, they get start getting banged. I mean, the upper energy. starts getting banged up too. I mean, they start smelling. They start getting, you know, they start stretching out a little bit. So yeah, there is. Yeah, 
there's there's a trade off at a certain point. That and that's my point about sort of you know, you don't want within those four or five hundred miles, three four hundred miles for the shoe to sort of break down and you know because you start getting. I mean, if you're in the forty forty percent compression set range, then it's starting to you know even even within that range, it's starting to lose a lot of its of its resiliency and a lot of its sort of characteristics. So you want it to sort of be at peak when you decide to chuck them or close yeah. to it. So that's kind of where our head's at with our so shoes. You're testing the Spectre here for running. Uh, what type of, like, since we're talking about durability and stuff, obviously I think these infused uh, TPU shoes that we're seeing, they seem to last a long time. Yes. At least the feeling underfoot. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, and that's actually, so it's funny you say that. So this, this first product we're making, we, is, it's a tiny bit on the heavy side. I would say it's not one of the lightest shoes we've made. And that's by, by design, I think, you know, we work with Vibram for our outsoles, so really high quality rubber compounds. And um, we wanted to make a shoe that would last. Uh, I think we wanted to come into the industry with, with a high quality product at the beginning and then start to sort of diversify and do things. We've got, I'll show you something else that's really cool. All right, why, why are you getting that? Where would you say the Spectre falls into like my running? Is it a daily trainer? Is it, uh, you know, for yeah. those? easier miles and that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, the, 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 the Spectre and the Tarantula are both sort of just neutral sort of daily trainer shoes that just you can do. Now you can probably run a marathon in them. Yeah, sure. depending on your goals. Exactly, exactly. But they're just sort of right down the middle of the road, sort of just easy shoes. What's um, it gonna weigh for a size nine? Do you know that yet? Huh? Uh, what will it be end up weighing for a size nine? I wanna say it was coming in at nine nine no i don't remember exactly i have to okay. give you the final specs yeah yeah actually i do have the specs somewhere <laughs> hey <laughs> you know what i have the specs bear with me all right i made uh and that was the one thing i forgot to do this morning is i did uh tech call out sheets here we go oh cool yeah which so, is the job well, that somebody else would normally do exactly <laughs> See? okay so where, where are we there we go okay so we are when, yeah when do you think these are going to hit the market i know that things are a little crazy right now with manufacturing yeah so these are hitting the market for so they were supposed to launch originally for spring what were they going to launch they were going to launch for spring 20 now they're going to launch for fall 20 so they should be in stores by I'd say june is what we're well, that's awesome that's right around the corner yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're shooting for. We'll see. We're having some delays. You know, uh, Vibram is, is an Italian company, so you can imagine <laughs> they're not exactly on schedule right now with a lot of things. Uh, yeah. So we'll see if that happens. But um, it's looking good. You know, we're, we're like I said, I'm testing, you know, uh, fit test samples. Uh, we're very close. So moles, moles you, made as we speak. Would you be comfortable putting that image of the shoe back on the screen so people can see it? Oh, yeah, of course. Well, I have shoes here, too, if you want to see them. Oh, yeah, let's see it. <laughs> let's let's okay. see the good. All right. So here it is. It's got a uh, TFP. So this is the tarantula. Uh, this is the supercritical soul. There's the Vibram. Uh, so I don't have any of the super sweet colors here because they're all out either being tested or they're being shot or they're locked in okay. the showroom and we can't get to it. Robbie is saying, show them all. <laughs> okay. We got, this is the, uh, this is the new kite racer. So this oh, is a maximum cool. shoe. Yeah. Uh, what is your foot size? I'm a 13. Oh, so you're not getting any demos. The, one of the beauties of owning a company is that I can you, you get, you make it happen. I make it happen. It's and actually, you, you know, that, actually that brings up a good point. It's really important for me to be able to test the shoes early on. We can cut through a lot of the BS uh, by me having them on because I can see, I can test and, and figure out things that are wrong immediately and know exactly what to do. Uh, that's perfect. So, yeah. So I can tell you, you know, like I said, if the, if the fit's wrong, whatever, like I'm not going to be able to, to, to tell you at an elite level what the shoe's well, like to run. But what I can tell you is like, it doesn't, the transition's poor, the weight's not right. Uh, I'm feeling some pressure in this point right here. I don't like the way, you know, the, 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 I don't like the balance of it, or I feel like it's a little heavy or the forefoot doesn't feel right. Like there's things like that, that are sort of, you can cut through very quickly. Do you feel that there's a difference in the feel of a shoe that's a size nine versus a 13 though? Like, is the components changed? Is it flexibility change or is it pretty, uh, pretty much the same? 
I think it's pretty much the same in that, the, you know, uh, at that level, you know, the, the, the forces that you're applying are so much greater because, you know, if, if, if I'm 6'3", 200, 202 pounds, 205 pounds, somewhere in that range, right? Little um, fella. Huh? Little guy. Little fella. Yeah, little guy. So the forces I'm putting on that size 13, I'm sure, are equivalent to whatever it is if you're, you know, if you're 5'11", yeah. 5'10", five, five, in, in, in a size 9. Um, I will tell you that it's a good thing to test at my weight and size because you can bang the shoe up pretty quick. Yeah. Which is good. So, uh, but ultimately you have to test multiple different sizes, you know, or, or else you're not going to really get the full, the full read because somebody, and, and people have different preferences. And so somebody, you know, I might love something and somebody would be like, I absolutely hate it. I can't believe you like that. You know what I mean? And, and we have to sort of figure out, all right, how, and then you have to sort of play a game of, it's basically just a democracy at that point, you know, how many people yeah. hate something versus liked it and which way are you going to go with it? Which it, yeah, which it brings up like uh, some of the companies you've worked with in the past, there's some that have been really good about being democratic on figuring out the fit in the right of the shoe. But with, with this one, if you're going for, um, you know, it's nice in your position to pick out and make the shoe more for what you prefer as far as fit and feel. Obviously, yes. if someone's getting out and running it, it's a different, you're going to pay attention to the performance side. Yeah. Um, yeah, so with that, in those shoes that you're talking about there, um, are any of them going to be coming in any sort of why? Because our boy Jarrett would kill me if I don't ask that question. Uh, not as of yet. We have not gotten big enough. This is a specter on a different sole that we ended up not going with. We ended up going with the supercritical bottom. Okay. Sidebar, sorry. Same uh, outsole? No. Huh? Same outsole? No, different outsole as well. So the... Um, here is the, that's the super critical outsole. Okay. This outsole is quite a bit lighter. This thing is, you know, this thing is more in the seven and a half ounce range. It's super oh, lightweight. Wow. We are using this foam on another shoe called the Nebula, which is a light trainer. Um, that shoe is coming down the pike as well for a fall. I'm digging the metallics. Yeah, I, I'm seeing this uh, return to sort of, terrible sort of you know 90s uh <laughs> 90s, it, but it's like an it's like an update to it you know it's like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. well this one is but i'm seeing like well, like that new stussy nike i mean it's just straight up just terrible you know 90s sort of silver you know like target running shoes you know so which is kind of yeah. there's something kind of cool about that so i mean I'm, like it's funny i go back and look at my early race day photos and i think one of the reasons i loved newton so much in the beginning was it's one of the only shoes that came in colors Everything Dude. was white with silver and either a blue or a red swoosh or something. There aren't a lot of shoes that were as different and radical as Newton, you know, and as a designer, I was really inspired by those. I, I thought they were super cool. I think that they didn't run very nice. They were very specific. I think you either loved them or you hated them. Yeah. And it was kind of one or the other. And I think that was the challenge. But from a, a putting your stake in the ground and, and, and doing something different, I really liked those shoes a lot. And I liked the color story. Um, Actually, that, that's an important thing. I mean, speaking of which, you know, color is an important thing for me, uh, trying to do something different. These are colors that came from moths. And um, again, trying to make our stuff have its own unique voice that's different than other, other brands. Yeah. This is Meb's New York Marathon shoe. That's cool. Still got the, uh, the ID tag this. on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. You can see where he wears out. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah. Dang, he even took the took the knob off. So the knob came in later. This oh, is, did? this is earlier on. Yeah, this is one of the early shoes. We actually Kurt spent a lot of time. He, you know, right where, right where your, uh, that's your first metatarsal, right? Yeah, the inside one, right? Yeah, yeah. Right there, he uh, was blistering a lot, and it, it took uh, some creative solutions to find uh, a means by which to, to stop him from getting blistered. That's right. She, he had an infection at one point. I yes. remember reading in his book that... Yeah, and he had, had those blisters at night. He had, had them everywhere. That's insane. Yeah, so it took us a while to get, get that worked out, but we did. All right, cool, man. Well, yeah. We're super psyched to uh, eventually get a pair to, to try out here and, and you know... We're very close. I cannot wait to send you uh, all of the, the crazy stuff we've got. Oh, I was going to show you one other thing. This is pretty cool. All right, cool. 
This is a new technology that Vibram has. Oh, it's wow. called light, light base. So this is something that they've tasked us. We have a really great relationship with Vibram and we're almost like their innovation arm on some levels. So we test a lot of stuff out for them. So we're, we're tinkering with this, this, this sole technology. What it, what it, it came from mountain bike carcasses. This is what it looks like when it's on a shoe. Oh, that's this, cool. How thin it is and how it wraps on. Yeah. So this is a tactical boot that we've got coming as well. That's awesome looking. So, um, and it's super lightweight. So what's cool about this is that obviously the heaviest part of a shoe is, is always the sole. But you need as much rubber as you need because, you know, when you start breaking the rubber up into little bits, it, it comes off. It delaminates. Yeah. You have issues with it. Sometimes it doesn't stock fit correctly. And it, and it can affect the ride and the transition. So what's cool about this stuff is that you can wrap the whole shoe in it. And it's super thin. So we're talking about this stuff is 0.8 millimeters. I mean, it's Do you see that eligible for running shoes? Oh, yeah. So wow. and you can do you don't have to wrap it. Yeah, so I think we're gonna, we've got a, a follow up to the outsole for, for the supercritical shoe that's gonna be using this technology that we're really excited about. I also kind of like how, I like how rough it looks. Yeah. It looks, it looks kind of crude and, you know, that was the other thing I liked about Tinker Hatfield's designs is that there was a crudeness to them that was always like, is that even a sneaker or is it a boot or what the hell is that? Like, I don't even know what I'm <laughs> looking at. You know, I always love that about it. Like, you see how it like crudely doesn't quite yeah. line up well. I think I like it's super it. cool. Yeah. What is so, what, now? What color is that coming in? That's pretty, pretty sweet looking shoe. The tactical boot. Yeah. This is coming in. Uh, did you say what color? Yeah. What colors? It's coming in black, uh, just black at first, and then we've okay. got a super cool tan and uh, neon orange kind of like hunting color combo. Like well, a desert boot. Uh, more like a uh, no, more like a Cabela's kind of like hunting, like a duck duck hunting combo. Okay. You know, like the tan with the with the neon orange. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, and then we're, you know, we're tinkering with some other, some other stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so sneak. those are some, huh? A little sneak. A little sneak of some other materials that we're working with. Uh, you know, we're always, it's funny, half of, you know, you can be driven by the design and you can also be driven by materials, you know, so that yeah. always plays a big part of, and I think it's important to, be honest about what the material does and, and, and use it in that way. You know, uh, I always think about, you know, the car industry is transitioning to electric, right? And yet so many cars still have grills and it's like, you do know that it doesn't need air to cool it. So like, <laughs> what, 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 why does it have a giant grill on it? And that's a perfect example of sort of design not catching up to the function. So, you know, it's, I, I, I like when, and that's what I like about the, the, the Vaporfly, like, products that look like the new technology that's in them unabashedly that yeah. they don't have any sort of leftover vestiges of previous design that they're just their own weird you know who does a great job of that is the military that's why we're always inspired by the military because shit looks so crazy because it just yeah. it is what it is well then i guess that would be a good question uh, when it comes to uh elon's electric truck it really was polarizing for people which side do you fall on oh my god are you kidding me it's so awesome Things yeah. that that. <laughs> and I think it's too. fine. Like finally, somebody had you know some cojones and did something really radically different. You know, and yeah. I love. I mean, I love the term. The term cyberpunk. It's perfect because it is what it is. It, it, there's a kind of retro. I love that space too. That sort of. It's funny. The the direction we're going in for this next season. I love retro futurism. I love the '60s vision of yeah. future. I love you know from a design standpoint uh, the, the cars of Bertoni. Um, you know, you know, when they would have those crazy silver suits on. And I just love that space. And yeah. I feel like the, 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 that truck is that. I'm with you on that. I also feel like it's a little bit of RoboCop. Oh, it's totally know, RoboCop. Yeah, there, but... It's definitely not that era. It's, it's 90s. Yeah, yeah, it's 90s. But I, what I'm saying is, like, I, it's not a new kind of futurism. It's yeah. an old futurism, which I think is really I, cool. I love it. Well, I yeah. think it's a romanticism to when we were like, what's it going to be like? Yes. And, and less pessimistic. That, yeah, and I want it to be that way. I want the space boots. I want the, I mean, yeah. I think that's why the Marty um, McFly boots. Oh, yeah, the McFly, yeah, yeah, totally. I yeah, so so well. whole mantra, isn't it? He kind of is actually attempting to make the future that we want without being cynical about it. Like, it seems ridiculous. You know, like, I yeah, mean, did yeah. you hear, like, he's talking about his new 
performance car is going to have rocket boosters on it. It's just like, what? <laughs> but I like that sort of naivete. And I like, you know, I think as a designer, you always have to sort of hold on to that. You know, you always get mocked for radical new things, always, you know, and especially nowadays with trolling and, and, and you know, the hype beast mentality, which is just like, you know, no matter what it is, talk trash about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, and I think that scares people, but it's nice when people can try something really different and, and, and stick to it. Yeah. yeah. Ultimately, that's what gets us up in the morning. That's what we, why we made Brand Black. At the end of the day, we are not, uh, you know, we don't have MBAs. We're not, we're not business guys. It's two guys that love sneakers, that try and make cool sneakers, and hopefully people will buy them so that we don't go out of business. And that's about, <laughs> as, that's about as much thought go, as goes into it. You know, I'd like to yeah. say that we're a little bit more cerebral than that, but that's really it. I mean, that's the thing. I think for me, what I do, I do it because it's fun. And I enjoy spending my time this way and I enjoy having this lifestyle. I, I see that with the brand Black and what you guys are doing. This is somebody who actually loves shoes. And it goes back to the thing I said in the beginning, when I put on a shoe, it can make me feel different and from the bottom up. And so I dig it, man. I'm into it. So yeah. you, you, you got a fan. but um, I love it. Thank you very much. There's yeah. one of you. <laughs> hey, I, I, Robbie, Robbie, Rob, when he saw that you guys, before he even knew the chain of who David was and where he was with the other companies, Robbie was like, this brand is amazing. Look at this. And I was like, yeah, that's, that oh, guy did these things. And he's that like, oh, what wow. means the most to me is that people that really care about product and design, you know, geek out on the stuff. Because ultimately, that's, that's what Billy and I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're, our DM is filled with pictures of other people's shoes. They were just like, dude, did you see that thing? That's fucking so cool. Or, you know, whatever. Like, you know, you guys got like start. right now we're, we're geeking out on Matthew Williams. I think he's the guy that's doing enough stuff. Matthew to, Williams. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. What do you he's think like, of uh, the fear of God? Uh, John, what's his name? Oh, uh, 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 oh yeah. I got a funny story with that one too. Uh, <laughs> when we first launched brand black, uh, in 2014 about a year and a half later this uh kind of like us like another geek that's in the product right and he was he was he was like my 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 doppelganger in denmark so he's a guy that played basketball his whole life but he's in a fashion world uh and was these this weird mix and so he found our brand he loved it and he's like you guys should come out to this the the copenhagen yeah, fashion yeah. fair and so we get out there and it's they invited us fear of god off-white uh basically everybody else blew up except for us <laughs> <laughs> everybody got got that uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah the, um, it's jerry, jerry lorenzo, lorenzo by the way so it's jerry lorenzo it's yeah. virgil and then they had a panel with all of us and of course and i remember telling the guy from hype beast i was like bro you do know that no one wants to ask us a damn question right that they're here to see those two guys but it's funny that you know um that was the beginning of that sort of that switch in the marketplace yeah. So those guys were all there and they sort of identified that and we were in that space. I think we're sort of trailing behind them, but we're definitely sort of of the same energy and all Los Angeles based. But the difference being that we are the, the, the one group in there that makes functional product. Yeah. Well, th what's exciting about it too, though, is that it is a sea change, I think. And I, I think that this, there, there's something special happening in the space right now. And I, I think you can get jaded and be like, all the off-white stuff is starting to look the same. It's just the tag or this and that. But it's not just about off-white or, or Jerry or Brand Black. It's about all this creativity that's coming into the space. Yes. And, and that's exciting. Yeah, and, 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 a, and a kind of democratization, too, of the space, right? So it was kind of like when I, when I started, well, interestingly, so I'm biracial. I'm half black, half white. And that in and of itself was sort of, you know, different. When I started in this industry, it was all white. And uh, African-American culture wasn't really, it was seen as a, as, a, as a tool by which to sell shoes, but it wasn't really understood, embraced, and sort of lived through it. I feel like that's what really has happened in the last 10, 10 years, is that uh, the culture is leading the industry now where, you know, the people that are really in the culture are actually the people that are driving it now, whereas it's not people trying to interpret it like it was before. And fashion was like that too, right? You know, you would see like Gucci sort of like riff on 80s and 90s hip hop, but it was always kind of like mm, a little off, not right now. It's like, 
the guys who are living it or the guys who are making it and there's a real connection there and i and i think that that's kind of cool as well yeah that that is interesting and, and you know i think it it's even started at it started i think at a celebrity level of having input into yes. it so kind you know of. these celebrities had input and now they're like okay well who are these guys who are creating this stuff and so i and then they become celebrities like i feel like uh you know, Virgil is now a celebrity in his own right. It's all the Kanye effect, isn't it? I yeah. Mean, if you think about it, that whole group is all Kanye. It's all, it's all his nuclear, it's all, right? It's all his sort of family right there, and they're all in his orbit. And then they just <laughs> exploded and, and, and changed the whole industry, for sure. Yeah. For, for, for better, I mean, there's aspects that I love about it. There's aspects that I don't like about it. But at least we're talking about it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know? yeah, there's some sneakers that, I would actually pick up, but I know that by the time I get to the Nike app, they're gone already. So, oh yeah, yeah. You know, by that. the time you've seen it, it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. All right, but, man. You know, this has been. What we're trying to do is is take that energy into functional product, which I yeah. think gets left behind sometimes. Like it doesn't just because it's good for you doesn't mean it has to suck, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's well, that's kinda... the thing. It's like there's there's I mean. If I look at my rag, there's shoes that I'll wear casually after I'm done running in them, and there's ones that I won't. Yeah. And, you know, it, there is a – you can tell which ones are functional and which ones have a little twist to them, so. Yeah, you know. yeah. And it's, it's, it's hopefully you can find, you know, you can do both. It doesn't happen all the time. It's rare. But when it does happen, it's really great, yeah. you know. Well, this has been pretty awesome. I really appreciate it. It's fun to geek out with somebody – uh, that I think I feel a kindred spirit to on, a yes, sir. On, the, on the shoe stuff. So, uh, I mean, I ruined my first pair of Jordans because I wanted to see what was in the air bubble. Cut them open. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, there I, is, I, I really by appreciate the way, your time. I've done that too. You see it, it does, air does come out. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> and the shoe is done. And um, the shoe is done. But, yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm really, I'm excited to watch the brand grow and, and, you know, be able to be like, Hey, remember when we talked back in 2020 <laughs> during the, during the Corona epidemic? The worst time ever. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. But man, keep it up. This is exciting. And I think, you know, in this time, this is when we should be getting creative. This is when we should be coming out of this thing with some, some cool stuff. So God, what do we have to lose? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is it. If, if this people don't it. come out of this with a new skill or talent or outlook, I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I saw a funny post. The guy said, do I contact my 600-pound life myself or do they just find me after this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, All right, thank bye. you so much, man. I'm really excited. I can't wait to send you the shoes. They're going to be uh, very soon. Next couple of weeks, we'll have all, all the protos ready. And uh, awesome. I appreciate people, you know, just noticing what the heck we're trying to do. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, so much, we, man. we will get them out there. We have one. I'm going to test it here. There's one question or something somebody has. Okay. It oh, says, yeah. quick, a, quick update on hoop shoes. Do you have, oh. can you give any, uh, yeah, any updates on your basketball shoes? Yeah, we've got a new rare metal uh, in the works uh, that will be launching for holiday 20. So actually, be f yeah, very soon. I don't know how I flip my camera here. Okay, sorry. I know, but I see a cool treadmill over there or something. So Yeah, uh, I got my treadmill on my bike, a post poster. This stuff right here, you can imagine how great this would be for a basketball shoe because this lets me wrap all the rubber I need because basketball shoes have to have full sheets of rubber, but they end up weighing a ton. Um, so you always end up with a compromise of how much rubber versus that. So I think that this is a great solution. So, you know, imagine these two things, super critical foam and this and a rare metal, and that's what's coming down the pike. Uh, we had a new rare metal um, that we were going to drop for uh, last season, but it just wasn't good enough. It wasn't interesting enough. It didn't perform that well. I just felt like it was just mediocre. It just wasn't, I was embarrassed to release it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just sometimes, <laughs> we'll sometimes you one. design it. You know, listen, they can't all be winners. Sometimes you design yeah. a turkey, and that was one. You know, it wasn't even a turkey. It just wasn't. It was whatever. It's like you know, like we it talked about. It wasn't was exciting. Products. Yeah, it just was what it was. It was okay. You know, it was like you know, if you need a, uh, you know, whatever. It's like one of those cars that you get at the rental car race, right? It just it is what it is. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's got cloth seats and a white exterior, and you know, you know, it's got air conditioning though. But that that's yeah, the radio it. sounds like crap though. The radio sounds like tinny. That's that's about yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. So All right. this new one I'm very excited about. All right, cool man. We will check in with you guys, and like I said, on Believe in the Run, we should be uh, having a preview of these shoes. Also, I'm going to take this Instagram. I'm going to screen record it. And I'll put it up on YouTube. It might be better as a podcast if you're running and you just want to listen to David and I riff. But look for this on YouTube too. And uh, man, follow this company. I think it's going to be exciting ride. All right, bud. Thank we you. Will, uh, talk to you soon. Okay.